So today we're going to be going over how to make I.O. or some type of field device uh, wireless. So the device that we're going to be utilizing today to accomplish this is going to be the Phoenix Contact Wireless Access Point Client and also Bluetooth module, all built into this one module. Uh, very cool device, uh, definitely going to be revolutionary in the sense of industrial automation. Uh, wireless is going to become very, very huge thing. I'm going to take you over to my screen real quick. As you can see right here, we have uh, access through the web browser at this IP address to this module. Uh, so we are already connected to this module. This particular video here, we're not going to actually connect this to a piece of I.O., but what we will use, we'll, we'll use this as basically like a wireless card for our PC. So you can utilize this thing as like a wireless access card for a PC as well, along with any other device that you would plug into a network. So any essentially anything that you would plug into an Ethernet network, you'd be able to utilize this device as the receiver for any signals. So uh, there's a couple different methods to going about setting this thing up. Um, there's like an easy mode where you don't need any cabling or anything like that, but we're going to use the cabling method just because I feel like it's the simplest, the most amount of devices are set up this way. So I think if you just kind of keep the same pattern of how you go about uh, setting up devices, it kind of just builds that repetition and makes you better at it. So what you'll need uh, for this particular method here is you will need the... M12 Ethernet cable and on the other end we have an RJ45 to plug into our hardwired Ethernet connection. Then here we have an M12 connector for power. And see, as you can see here we have some different blinking lights and whatnot. We're going to go ahead and press and hold this mode button right here. We'll hold this button for like 10 seconds. Uh, after you press and hold this for the 10 seconds, when you go and release it, you should see the indicator lights. Uh, make a change alright so this is what you should have after you do a factory reset every time we do a video we do a factory reset and go through the process of setting things up a couple of times and whenever it comes to the factory reset it seems like every time the factory reset never wants to work for us whenever we're shooting the video so you may have run into this issue where you have to hold the factory reset for 10 seconds and then you let go of it like it says and then it still don't work and then just try it again. Just do the process a few times. Uh, I, I've experienced that with a couple different devices that when you do the factory reset that uh, sometimes it just doesn't reset on the first time. So now that we have this thing in a factory reset, we're going to jump back into the computer real quick. Uh, as you can see here, here's the IP address that it's set at. We press enter. Notice that we lost connection here. Uh, we just refresh the page basically and and since it's at a factory default setting, we're just verifying that we have actually factory defaulted. Uh, come over here. I want to refresh this page as well. I just want to verify and just show that we don't have any internet. Um, then we're going to come down here to our... Then we're going to come down here, right click and open our network and internet settings. Change adapter options. And uh, we're going to be using our hardwired Ethernet connection. Uh, notice I have the Wi-Fi disabled. Uh, you want to disable any other network enabled devices uh, because it may cause issues and conflicts with IPs and whatnot. And also whenever you're using a web-based server uh, or a web-based software, your computer will almost always choose the, e the Ethernet adapter that gives you uh, internet access. So, which will mean that you almost never have access to whatever web device you're trying to communicate with. So we're going to right click, come in, go into the properties, Ethernet protocol. We're going to change this to a static IP address. Now our static IP address is just going to be 192.168.0.1. Um, I know this just because in the, we're going to just OK all this right here. In the documentation, it calls out that the new IP address will be set to uh, 192.168.0.254 for the uh, Phoenix device. Boom. We logged in. Here we have access to the web browser. Uh, and we just opened up Google Chrome to be able to do, utilize this. 
Just an FYI, the purpose of this video is not necessarily a super exploratory video. This video is about getting this device online as quickly as possible and also trying to point out a few things that may uh, cause some headaches for some individuals. We might have some other videos coming out that's more of exploratory of these different devices and whatnot, but uh, as of right now, we're mainly focused on getting these functional and helping people out in the industry and then being able to get up and running as quickly as possible. And also just showing some of the capabilities of some of these devices. So we're going to come in here to our network settings. Uh, notice that we're at a static IP address and that this is what our set static IP address is. And this is the factory default IP address. We're going to come over here to our uh, WLAN settings. We'll go back to the network settings here in a second. But for now, uh, I want to get the Wi-Fi set up first. And I like to do the Wi-Fi portion of these devices first because I like to establish our Wi-Fi connection before uh, we lose access to the device when changing the IP address. So... Uh, you want to come over here and you want to click enable so that just ensures that your Wi-Fi is enabled on the device and then you want to come over here and if you have this set to access point you want to change it to client um, and then you can choose what bandwidth you want to communicate at uh, for industrial purposes I would recommend choosing one or the other because you don't want to have an issue where on your initial setup you have it working at 5 gigahertz and maybe the speed is working fine and you're not having any communication issues and then maybe it changes to 2.4 gigahertz in the field uh, and then now you don't have enough speed in the network to keep up now you're generally not going to run into issues like that but it's something to think about or you might end up with an issue where uh, it was on 2.4 gigahertz uh, and then in the field it tries to jump to 5 but maybe the device is too far away and now with 5 gigahertz you cannot reach as far uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. 2.4 gigahertz is going to be slower, but reach a, a longer distance. And then 5 gigahertz is going to go uh, faster, but it's going to reach a shorter distance. And if I'm not mistaken, it's about 150 feet with no obstructions for 2.4 gigahertz and about uh, 50 feet for uh, 5 gigahertz with no obstructions. So one thing I like about this one is you have the option to scan for networks out there. So it'll basically just look uh, the same way the same way your phone does whenever you when you hit your Wi-Fi button. So we'll scan for the different networks. We'll click in here and select one. Ours is Alien.net. I, I honestly do not know what the channels mean here. Uh, I do I just basically choose one, and I think it in the background it, it's kind of selecting what channels to use. Um, so the connected SSID will be the alien.net. Now you could have manually just type this in, uh, but something to keep in mind is this is all case sensitive. So if this, this N was lowercase, it would not be able to connect and communicate. Uh, then the next thing will be password. I'm not going to display the password because, well, I don't want you knowing our password. This should get us connected to the wireless signal but we may not have internet access or any other access outside of that because we did not change our, our, our IP assignment and our static IP address. All right, so now we're gonna come down into our adapter settings again. All right, now that we've rebooted and powered back up, we just wanna verify that we have a connection. Uh, it says the status is on, we're enabled. Uh, a blue indicator light that will be blinking on here saying that our Wi-Fi signal is connected. Um, the next step, being that we're going to utilize this within just our network and use it as a wireless card for our PC, uh, we'll do this, this part a little bit different. And we're going to come into the network settings, and then we are going to change this uh, to a dynamic IP address. And in normal operation, if you're going to deploy this as I.O., you'll definitely give this a static IP address of whatever your IP scheme is going to be for your equipment. Uh, but being that we are, are, are using our office network, we're going to go ahead and go to dynamic. We're going to save and reboot. And then we're also going to come over here to our uh, adapter. 
and we are going to change the properties on it as well to be DHCP. So that way everything kind of connects all through and is assigned by our DHCP server versus uh, trying to give everything a static IP address and trying to route everything uh, through on a network. This is something to keep in mind. Whenever you do this process, you're gonna lose connection to it because now it no longer has a static IP address. Uh, so a couple of things that I will do to uh, find out what IP address I'm looking for is to come down here back to our uh, network settings when you get to this screen here uh, right click and go to status that was weird so right click and go to status after the status box pops up there will be a box right here that says detail this right here will tell you uh, the IP address that's assigned to your Ethernet card at the moment. So it's a 192.168.4.74. With that being said, uh, we also have a tool that we utilize it's called Advanced IP Scanner. Um, I've never had any issues with this, but I have heard that it can cause some issues with uh, larger networks. So be careful utilizing this tool. But the tool is Advanced IP Scanner. And so basically it's just going to scan the network for whatever's on there. Um, right here, you're basically giving it a range of things to search for on the network. So 192.168.4. And then it's going to search between the range of 1 and uh, 254. So this you may need to change this. Like a second ago, we would have been on this IP scheme with a 0 here. Uh, but now this is a 4. And so that was the main reason why we went and looked at our adapter. Because we wanted to see what this part of the number was. So we knew what what subnet to be in to search for that range. So after that we can go ahead and do a, a scan and uh, this take, thing will take a second. You can speed this up and slow it down in settings if you want to. And the main thing that we're going to be looking for is over here on the manufacturer side of things uh, we will see a Phoenix contact device. So boom, as you see right here, Phoenix contact device, there's the IP address of it. So 192.168.4.73 so we're going to come in here and we're going to change this to a 4.73 and we'll see what we get. Boom. We're back online again. Um, this thing's connected. It's ready to talk to the internet and kind of just to prove that out, when we started this video, uh, we had no internet connection and we'll just refresh this page. Boom. Here we go. We now have a uh, internet connection. So very, very cool. Um, set up that easy. Uh, the video is probably way longer than, than the actual setup time, so it's kind of remarkable how easy it is to get these things up and running and online. Uh, probably between the wireless access point and this client here, you can have this thing set up in probably 30 minutes, especially if you've done a few of them. Hopefully this video was helpful and kind of just gave you a little bit of insight on how easy it is to set these things up, and I think machines that have any type of Ethernet devices on them, they need to have at least the wireless access point version of this. At a bare minimum, you can utilize this thing as a wireless programming port. Uh, and to me, that utility is, is awesome. You don't have to be sitting right next to the control cabinet. You can be on the other side of the robot cell where the teach pendant's at and have your teach pendant and your uh, PLC software pulled up right there. This gives you the ability, if you ever want to expand into remote I.O. or have remote, remote I.O. on your robot tooling, uh, this gives you that capability, and, and I, it's the, I think it's honestly the future of automation. It's the way things need to go. It's To me, it's just what makes sense. If you all would uh, like for us to help you all deploy any of these systems or help you get them set up, uh, feel free to reach out to us at Elite Automation. Um, contact information will be at the back of this video. We specialize in robotic cells and full system integration and, and using technologies like this w with Wi-Fi and, and mirrors, autonomous robots. Um, that's really where we're trying to push Elite Automation and push the company is just into the futurist, the future of automation, the futuristic sides of automation um, and, and just using technologies that make our systems more deployable, more future-proof, 
and and can make it so that way our deployments are quicker guys thank you for sticking around to the end i really appreciate it and i'll catch you on the next one